Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to another awesome episode with our favorite TikToker, Elizabeth, the queen of TikTokers, the queen of our community on TikTok. I want to note because somebody said something to me yesterday. Yes, my backdrop has changed. My awesome boyfriend is in the process of building me out a new set. And these curtains, we're going to actually dye an indigo type color having a lot to do with the idea of indigo children, which Liz, I don't know if you know much about the whole theory of indigo yeah. children. Um, and so this new awakening and we're waiting for the die in and we've got some other material that are coming in the mail to build this nice set out for you guys. It's about time that I made myself a set. So I'm not always <laughs> sitting at the kitchen table. <laughs> so, so in the interim, we have a white background, but welcome Liz. How are you doing this morning? You've got your beautiful baby with you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Trying to keep him calm at this point. <laughs> <laughs> in the toddler face, so we're just you know doing yeah. as much as we can everybody i think most people watching have children or our aunts or uncles or understand that that age that that levi is yeah. in is such can be i know for parents can be a frustrating age but it's also in my opinion as an aunt of course i'm not the parent i'm the <laughs> aunt it's one of the cutest stages because they're yeah. really discovering the world and they're really yeah. like figuring things out, even though they don't have the vocabulary to express their ideas or what they're seeing, it's still adorable to kind of see them like discover things. And right. I, I, think that is, I think that's also part of it being the hardest stage is that they can't express what they want or how they're feeling. And you're just like, I don't know what you want either. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Just tell me. Um, but, you know, we've taught him sign, a little bit of sign language, and he uses, like, the same words for different things, but I've kind of figured it out what he means by it. Um, it's really cute, because his new favorite words are stuck and truck. Um, stuck and truck. He calls, <laughs> he calls everything, every car a truck. Um, and he, when he's trying to, if something's heavy and he, he's moving it around, he goes, stuck. I'm like, it's not stuck, honey. It's just heavy. <laughs> it's really funny. It's really cute. It really is. But, you know, he's he's learning. He's he's pretty uh, ahead of the game, and he always has been. Um, you know, those pandemic babies. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so he kind of seems like he's going into the twos a little bit early. Um, he's only 18 months, but. Yeah, just so. awesome yeah. No, yeah. I, Liz and I were texting because we're we're friends off screen too. So we typically text yeah. a few times a day. And I was telling her that uh, one of my friends a long time ago, because most of my friends now their kids are older, but she had back when Facebook was really the only social media platform. Um, she she would do these daily posts where she would talk about what her toddler did, but she would write it like she was writing about her drunk college friend. Because <laughs> toddlers and drunk adults are the same. They're the yeah. same. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> They're the same. My, day, my days in LA actually are paying off now because I very much know how to handle it. Because <laughs> I was always the sober one <laughs> amongst my friends. <laughs> Maybe that's why we go through college stage to deal with that before we have children. So we know how to, right. you know, they're trying not to wet their pants. They're trying to like not fall over while they're walking they're incoherent yeah. when they're speaking they start crying at random things yeah it's yep. the same exactly. toddlers and drunk adults the same <laughs> um so and that's what uh, I, I always we've talked about this with the guys from mystery archive i always appreciate people who have a sense of humor you know and that can laugh at situations and i do think even as we're talking about with the guys from mystery archives that People on our side of this game will say, since we're on YouTube, for lack of a better word, I'm going to try to keep this episode on YouTube. Um, the those, uh, for lack of a better word, in this game, our side, people tend to have a really good sense of humor. I think yeah. a lot of these people, even people that don't have YouTube channels that I just know out there in life who are on our side, are really funny about yeah. the situations that we're in. And uh, I mean, you have to be honestly. <laughs> you have to be yes. And You're I think, insane. <laughs> I know. And I think, and, and what was it, uh, Brett said from mystery archives that humor laughter, they say laughter is the best medicine, but humor is the one thing that demonic spirits can't understand. Right. They don't understand laughter. Yeah. They don't, and that's yeah. what takes the power away is when you like laugh mm -hmm. at them right. instead of coil back in fear, you laugh at them. Um, right. and I know that's what we try to do with, uh, yeah. our, our, you know, commander in chief, Mr. B, we always try to like, my boyfriend, I try to like giggle at, you know, he's an actor. So let's yeah. just giggle at what he's saying. And 
right. you know, hopefully this, hopefully this will pass soon. <laughs> you know, I'm not one that uh, wants to ever give a date of when I think things are going to flip because as we know, Liz, in the Bible, it said it'll, it'll come like a thief in the night. Yeah, exactly. It'll I, come not I mean, Everybody's that. always, always trying to guess. And I mean, yeah. even more recently, I've had so many more people reach out to me on Telegram and whatnot asking like, when do you think this is going to happen? Do you think this is going to happen on this day? I'm like, I know as much as you do. I really do. Like just as much, I promise. Just yeah. because I have friends that are in the truth or community and have found myself in this community somehow doesn't mean I have any inside information. Like I really don't. <laughs> um, I think that's a lot of us in the truth or community. I think all of my information I have, and I really, on my channel specifically, when I'm by myself, I really just try to stick to like, history of things to try to figure out where we were duped or manipulated because that's yeah. something that we can control that's something we can start re-educating yeah. ourselves on but i know oh look at that <laughs> i know nothing i have no idea of like what the military is doing you know i do yeah. have an insider down at tyler perry studio and i do have an insider with the atlanta police department but most of the stuff they tell me i don't even put on the channel because i don't want to jeopardize anything and right. if we can guess the date when things are going to happen then so can the bad guys and so right. i respect the fact that the good guys that are in charge have kind of kept that to themselves and maybe yeah. have put out false dates through some channels right. just because we are in a very important war you know, and, yeah. and this is about the livelihood of all human beings. And so it's okay if, <laughs> if they put some wrong dates out just to keep, you know, I'm not, I know we know as the military back channel said that this is all just a movie and yeah, the good guys are going to win, but I do believe that there are still bad guys out there that have not been arrested yet. I do still yeah. I think they're the big ones. I think they took the big ones down first that could really do damage, but I think there's some small guys out there that are still, they still need to like, kind of corner and, and de take their power away before they can really um, flip everything so that human beings don't pay the price for that. If that makes sense. I'm trying to be careful about yeah. what I say, but you yeah, know. for sure. I mean, also like, I feel like when people, the only reason that people want to know dates is because they're very much just thinking of themselves because they want to be prepared. It's like, we're going into a world that's very much not about us. Like right. not about you specifically in a sense. It's about the collective. And that's a world we have not been in in a very long time. Um, none of us in our lifetime have seen it. Um, everything's very much about me, 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 my family, making sure everything's in place if anything crazy happens. And of course, that's understandable. But at the same time, this is for the good of all. So we yeah. have to think of all <laughs> need to be ready for this. Um, I had some people ask me, and they're like, you know, I... I you just want to make sure my family's taken care of and you know like is the um like how bad do you think the 10 days of darkness are going to be I don't know if I can say that but um I think it's fine yeah I, yeah I, they're just like you know how bad it's going to be and I'm just like I mean I think the goal is not to traumatize people um so I think whatever happens will be able to get prepared or be prepared in some form and I don't think it's going to last as long as, you know, the doom and gloomers say of months. Um, I think it's just going to be a short kind of like, yeah, this is what's happening. This is what our world's been like. You know, we got to shut down for a little bit to rebuild, reset everything in a way, yeah. you know. Um, I'm glad so you brought that up because I know some people talking about that specific time period of, of darkness that some people believe that we'll even lose like electricity during that time. But I was thinking about that. And Liz, when your husband's from Africa, you and I live in the deep South. And then I know yeah. people that I was thinking about that, that you can't like down here in, in Georgia, at least like if there are houses without electricity, especially in the summertime, they will condemn that house because you yeah. could die of heat stroke. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's that hot here. And there is a huge portion of this world that is in that same um, situation. Even if they don't have air conditioning, they have fans, they have stuff that needs to electricity. So I was like, I just don't see them 
them pulling out off our electricity either for that long period yeah. of time because it would really put people in a lot of danger, especially if they didn't have anywhere to go that had electricity. Mm -hmm. If it was the whole world, and yeah. um, people up in the north, super uh, countries that are super cold, and they're in our winter time down here in the south, we could probably survive without electricity because we could build a fire. It would be fine. Yeah. It doesn't get that cold as compared to. You know, Canada or, or Norway or, you know, and, and down here anyway, we don't even get snow. Um, but even, but for the winter time for them, for them to pull the electricity, that's dangerous for them as well. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. And so I think yeah. I, I don't think that we really, truly uh, really understand what that time period of darkness is going to look like. We know yeah. that we'll get the EBS. We know that they'll shut down the TV, the television, possibly the Internet, possibly YouTube, possibly all the platforms for a while just to reshow. Um, what they need to tell us, you know, like a new, their own. But I, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a full 10 days or a couple of days. I don't think we'll yeah. have electricity. I don't think we're going to be without stuff that we need because that would put human beings in danger, you know? Right. Um, so just, just with the elements, not with other people, but just with the elements. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think he would be fine. these kids would be fine. They're like, we don't care. We'll just play anyway for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, um, I think it's gonna it's gonna be about resetting the calendar too what do you think about that yeah about that? for sure i think it's definitely that's i think that's like if, if we have any kind of darkness it's gonna be like a whole like you know resetting the money system resetting the calendar like you know like we're not gonna have essentially connection to other people the way that we have it now with all of our technology so I think that it's going to be kind of like a, a rebirth in a way. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I just, I think people are also thinking of like the Texas um, snowstorm that happened. Yep. And like what people don't realize is that I don't think that was a good guy operation. That was definitely either. the bad guys. Um, so like, don't think of it that way. Also we're going into fall and if anything happens, in fall that's like the perfect time yeah, in my it opinion. Is. yeah. It's, cooler, it's not it's not cold it's not hot you know um yeah and that's the same in the southern hemisphere they would be going into their spring while we were going into fall so it, it is a pretty balanced yeah. um atmosphere for people uh to be able to be safer than in the dead of summer or the dead of winter for, yeah. for all of humans i mean oh my goodness <laughs> Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, what I've been hearing is that people are very much like saying that it's going to be over by the end of the year, at least. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> don't worry. So You're, so it's, this is totally fine. Everybody watching, has, most people have kids. They totally understand. And he's adorable. So and we can hear you. So, um, okay. Yeah. And so, I, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be this, the end of this year for sure. Yeah, and I, we, I actually asked, so we had Hurricane Ida that came through um, the United States a few weeks ago, and it did cause some damage. And I asked Janine, our friend Janine, who reads tarot cards, to look into that if that was um, good guy or bad guy. And she got that it was bad guy, that it had been, and it wasn't as strong as it could have been, but that's why I'm... You know, so a lot of people in our community are convinced that, like, all of the bad guys are gone, and it's just good guys left. And I don't believe that because if it were just good guys left, then the good guys are also psychopaths because they're still yeah, and they're this misery. movie would be over already. Yeah, <laughs> most so, likely. Yeah, <laughs> so the military doing. back channel um, says that you're watching a movie. I think what they mean by that is that the good guys have the upper hand and relax mm -hmm. because God will win. We know that that God is going yeah. to win because um, Lucifer's time is done. Um, yeah. but, but that there's still an ongoing W A R there's still yeah. these people on the bad guy side of this movie are fighting for their lives right now, literally oh, yeah. fighting for their lives. And so if you, yeah. if you put yourself in their shoes, which I know that's hard to do, but if you put yourself in their shoes, they don't care what they have to do. They'll try anything to derail right. them at this point. And if, if it means taking out innocent people, 
And that's what right. the good guys have to be aware of and have to try to work around so that they don't do that, you know? Yeah. And so, and so, yeah, actually that might be something interesting, Liz, that I, I talked about this with David yesterday on the dark outpost. And we know, we know that the church, you and I both grew up in churches down here in the South. That's a special <laughs> flavor of church down in the South. Uh, yeah. For those who are not from, from America, Southern, Southern churches are your social gathering centers. They're your cultural centers um yeah. everybody goes to church down here this is the bible belt even if they're not super religious they still have a church state family they go to you're all all grandfathered into it but we know that the churches including the catholic church all the protestant churches have all been infiltrated and are not actually the people in the church could very well have good hearts but the the head honchos up the line <laughs> out of the organization are all C-A-B-A-L members. Um, now, we I talked about this with David yesterday because in a lot of the missing books of the Bible, as well as the canonized Bible, talks about how this time period that we were born into, not the one we're going into, but the time we were born into, was the tail end of Lucifer's reign on this earth. That God allowed Lucifer to take the reins for this time mm -hmm. period because we fell from grace and we had to learn. We had to suffer the consequences of the knowledge of good and evil. You can't know true good until you understand mm -hmm. pure evil, right? And yeah. so God in his infinite ways like stepped back and was like, all right, whether you believe Adam and Eve really lived and ate from a tree or whether you believe that's a metaphor, regardless of what you believe, something happened to make us have to suffer these consequences to understand more than we originally were supposed to understand. And so I, I rereading that kind of gave me like that light bulb moment that they didn't really focus on that in church. Like, Hey, you know, this was the arrangement that God, that's why all these bad people are able to have been able to rise to the top is because of the person that was really, or the being that was really ruling this earth, which we now know was Lucifer. And now it's mm -hmm. changing timelines where now God is coming back in and removing Lucifer's time is up. That's the apocalypse, yeah. right? The lifting of the veil, the re the revolution. Mm -hmm. It's their tribulation. Their time is up. They got to go yeah. now. It's up. It's yeah. time. It's like time time out. Like it's time time <laughs> time out's over. You got to go back, Lucifer. What do you think about that, Liz? Yeah, I mean, I kind of I agree. Um, I always have thought about it similarly in the sense of like, you know, we're super powerful beings. Um, I've always, well, not always, but very much the last five or six years have really started to understand that and believe that like I mean it says in the Bible we're like God um and we're supposed to do greater things than Jesus did yeah. um yeah. and uh he does a lot of cool stuff <laughs> yeah book of John oh, okay. talks about that yeah yeah I always think about sorry he's like <laughs> it's okay <laughs> hold on <laughs> All you parents out there, you know, you know what this is like. <laughs> I'm an aunt. I've been in many times with my nieces and nephews while, they, while they've had these moments. So, and as Jesus said, gather all the children unto me, right? So he's totally fine. Yeah, I am. Um, so well, basically the way I think about it is like, basically when Lucifer was cast out, I see it as like he was essentially cast out to this domain, like, like, you know, this is like his prison in a sense. And so he's trying to rule it as best he can because it's the only place he's allowed to be. Um, so I kind of like, it's like he's confined to earth and space basically. Um, and I think there's more out there than that. <laughs> um, so I think that, what we sign up for essentially when we come to the earth is to essentially take it back and rule over it and like, you know, basically put him in his place. <laughs> um, being like, you're here as a prisoner, not as a ruler uh, yeah. kind of thing. So that's kind of how I've always seen it as like, we sign up for a mission to come here and essentially restore it or, you know, get him to see that he's not so powerful. And I think right. that's definitely right. what this, time is and people are kind of starting to understand that a little more um that like hey we don't have to allow these crazy demonic people <laughs> like uh the ones that have decided to follow him um to rule because 
it's essentially not their domain. It's their prison. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, you know, because evil can't stand to be in the light. And I think this earth and this realm was supposed to be a light realm in a sense. Um, That's why we have uh, Mr. Um, B-I-L-L-G-A-T-E-S was trying to block out. Yeah, sun. exactly. And I mean, I've heard things about more than one sun and like how they're supposed to be that. And I think that because we have lowered our vibrations and gone along with what the evil side has gone along with for so long that we've kind of essentially we've let it we've you know like stepped out of our realm of dominion and yeah. uh, we let it like essentially die um, yeah. so I think yeah. that now we're understanding that that's not what we have to do anymore that's like that's a choice yeah more so uh, than it is like we're just victims to it um so yeah that's kind of the way I always think about it it's like no you were meant to rule and reign and be like God like God is the king. He is the creator of all. That's what we are supposed to be like. Yeah. So that's what we're supposed to do here also. <laughs> and we gave our sovereignty up to this, these people and, um, and allowed them to like manipulate us and trick us about, we inherited uh, the meek shall inherit the earth. This is our earth. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it sounds, have you ever, did you ever study paradise lost John Milton's paradise lost in school? Um, no. Old, lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago but he he writes um basically paradise lost is this long poem about um about lucifer's fall and it's it's tall it's told from lucifer's perspective and what you just said really summed up like it starts with him like laying in this like looking up and he's on, like basically defeated and on the earth um and then we're told too that you know the the uh bad guys believe that lucifer is the bearer of light that he's the one that brings the illumination that he's the one that's gonna free you um because he freed adam and eve in the garden by having them eat from this tree of of, of knowledge of good and evil well in the missing and banned books of the bible especially in the apocryphon of john um it tells a bit of a different story that god knew he knew that Lucifer was going to do that. And he knew that human beings were going to respond in the way that we did. And he allowed it to happen so that we could go on this journey. And so that we could discover, really understand who we are at the end of it, if that makes sense. So that's just a very interesting um, perspective to take. And, you know, uh, as I was talking about with David yesterday on the Dark Outpost, and Janine came on and read some about the missing books of the Bible in the Bible, we know that the Bible, Jeanine has read the Bible has been altered three different times and that we have most of the books in the Bible we don't have access to. And so people often ask me, they're like, or say to me like, no, the Bible's the word of God. It's, it's totally true. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I agree with you, but we've never seen the Bible. We've never seen it. Right. It's still hidden under the right. Frank Vatican. Our parents have never yeah. seen it. Our grandparents have never seen it. So I agree yeah. with you, but what we have is not the, not the real Bible. It's, it's a manipulated yeah. copy of it to try to control a narrative, you know? Right. And it's been changed so many times. Like, I mean, it's not just like, you know, changed by words. It's changed through culture mm -hmm. because I mean, originally it was in Aramaic. Aramaic yep. is different than Hebrew. Yep. Hebrew is different than Greek. Greek is different than English. Coptic's not even a, a language that exists anymore. Coptic, and we have a lot of yeah. books written in Coptic. I was telling this to David too. We were talking about um, the original text, and I said, you know, when they implemented the Federal Reserve here in America um, in the early 20th century, that is when they also started to control the educational system where we had our public schools were established here in America, governmental schools where people didn't have to pay to go to school, which seems like a great idea because then everybody get, gets an education. Well, at that point, they stopped teaching kids how to read and write in these old dead languages. Before then, people were taught how to read and write in these old languages. And they took that ability away from us because even today, if someone were to say, Bryce, here's the keys to the Vatican library, have at it. I, I wouldn't even know. I would I just give the keys back to him because I don't know how to read those languages. It's, it's, it, it, it would just be gibberish to me. I don't know what, what it says. Right. You know, and right. so we have to then put our trust in people who tell us they can translate it. 
but you know, so it, there's going to be a whole lot of like knots we've got to untangle. Even once everything flips, there's going to be a whole lot of knots we're going to have to untangle. And I do worry about, and I know Elizabeth, you probably like with the fundamentalist um, evangelical churches, especially down here in the South that are very, yeah, very strongly to their dogmatic beliefs, almost the belief system more than the faith. It's going to be yeah. really, I think I really worry about those people that it's going to be. Yeah, so I do too. Hard. That was something I wanted to, I like thought to mention when we were talking with Sabrina Gal, Michael and Christy, I was like, I seriously am so concerned about the very heavily religious people because they think that they are completely right about everything. It's like a pride thing and it's going to be so crushed. Like, yeah. it, and I seriously worry about like, you know, the S word, um, about them doing something to themselves because of everything they've ever believed is a lie. Like removing them. And what she means guys is the word that removes you from the, that you decide to remove yourself from the earth plane, that word. Yeah. We can't say that word on YouTube. So, <laughs> so y'all just, so you know, what she would say with the S word. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. And it, it does become like, you know, I don't know if you've ever followed the 19 kids and counting the Duggars uh, from the IBLP. And I used to watch that show. I enjoy some of the kids. I think some of them are kind of funny. But, and I remember my mom, so I grew up in a very conservative Christian home, but my parents are also very grounded people. Like we listened to rock and roll. My parents drank, we danced. We were, we were two piece bathing suits. Like even though we were conservative Christian, my parents were also normal and were also very open-minded to a lot of things. And my mother, just recently, we were talking about Josh Duggar's arrest um, for CP, um, and uh, my mother saying, you know, I used to have a lot of respect for the Duggars because they really held true to their faith. Now I'm understanding what their faith is. And I don't really respect them that much anymore. So even my mother is starting to see the cracks. And I think we are going to see start to see some of these cracks in these fundamental beliefs that they're not Christian beliefs. Some of these fundamentalists right. are not following Christian beliefs at all. They're following right. a law and order that's not the law and order really of God, but of a manipulator. Exactly. Manipula because I feel like what really has fruit, like, stands. And, you know, the, like, the very heavily religious belief system has no fruit in it at all. Like, it's, and that's why so many kids and so many, you know, people, like, stray from the path. Because the path wasn't actually pure yeah. anyways. It's toxic. Like, it wasn't, yeah, it's. You know, it's just say you can't do this, and there's no reason why. You know, it's just say it's it's so confining, uh, confining. Yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> so um, it puts you in such a box, and we were never meant to be in a box like that. Um, so yeah, I, we, I we were, I'm <laughs> yeah. We were talking yeah. about with Janine, the divine feminine, yesterday, and how a lot of the stories of the Bible that were removed are mm -hmm. the stories of women that Jesus yeah. worked with, especially like Mary Magdalene, not just Mary Magdalene, there were many of them that Jesus yeah. attempted to teach. And, um, and those stories were absolutely removed from the Bible. I know the IBLP, which is Bill Gothard's like really Baptist kind of organization. They teach this, this notion from what I understand from my research that uh, women, you know, the man is the head of the household and women are completely submissive to their husband, even in their relationship with God. So even yeah. the women don't have the ability to pray to God, they have to pray through their husband. And that is not Christianity. <laughs> that is not what Jesus said. That's yeah. not, that's not okay. That is yeah. um, fund extreme fundamentalism. That is dangerous. And A-B-U-S-I-V-E. Yeah, 100%. Uh, my sister, um, you know, like we've all done like missionary stuff growing up. My family has. And uh, my sister uh, at one point was like preaching in a specific church. And uh, my, one of my relatives got so upset because a woman is never supposed to preach. And I was like, I don't think God is so concerned about gender. I really don't. Like, no. <laughs> I don't think that's what he's focused on when there's such a corrupt world. <laughs> like, like, come on, like, where's the real problem? Like, 
Are you serious? Have you heard of the girls on YouTube, Girl Defined and uh, uh, Lori Alexander? Um, so I found these people because we're doing this, these deep dives on Davis channel on top of the missing books of the Bible. We're also deep diving into these, like what appear to be from our opinions, fundamentalist CULTs. Um, so girl defined, they're two sisters and they're late twenties, early thirties. And then Lori Alexander is this elderly lady and they are super fundamentalist. To the point where they really, even though they are women there themselves, they see they say very A B U S I V E things to other women. Like women shouldn't work, they shouldn't preach, they shouldn't do any of these things. Meanwhile, meanwhile, they have a huge YouTube platform where they're making money, so they're preaching and they're working. So it's so hypocritical. It's just totally hypocritical in that way. But yet you're telling other women not to do that. And, um, you know, we, we've had a lot of discussions about on David's channel, that's a high idea of a help meet, which is what a lot of fundamentalist ch churches call women. I don't think that's what they think it means. I think when you're in a loving relationship with two people, to people and and you know Liz you stay at home with your son but you've got your TikTok you've got your t-shirt store you're you're raising your son your husband supports you you support your husband you know it's it's an equal you're helping each other become one in that relationship one and that's how even though my boyfriend I consider my boyfriend and I actually to be married even though we're not legally married but I we are and I believe in the eyes of God we're married because we're totally committed to each other we live like we're married and we are you know completely vowed to each other no need to get the federal government involved in that but um but we do that we support each other in every way he's a better cook than I am he can sew and I can't you know but I you know I do things we have our rhythms in the house where we help each other create our lives together. And I think that's what that means. And I think that, and it's okay. Like my sister's a housewife. She's got three kids, but her husband she doesn't expect her to cook every night and doesn't expect her to have like a spit spot house. And she, she's, his, she's her, his, she's her own woman, you know, and my brother right. like, supports her and she supports him, oh, yeah. you know? And I just, I think that there, you look at some of this stuff. I mean, I was listening to somebody that came out of one of those really conservative, super conservative fundamentalist groups. And she was saying that there are some families in those groups where the husband controls what the wife even eats. Oh my God. Like talk about oh. ABUSA. Do you really think Jesus was going around like telling women what they could and like, come on. I, mean, I honestly on. believe that control is, is essentially witchcraft. Like that's what it is. Like, so yeah. So, like, in that religious world, I'm like, you are no better than the people that are practicing witchcraft. Do you realize that? When you are a doormat to your husband? <laughs> Sorry. And that, all men. That's not it. Yeah. Well, and even, it. you know, like, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative dresser for the most part. Like, I'm not a girl that walks around with my, you know, booty hanging out and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but like, even what I'm, the shirt I'm wearing today would be considered scandalous in those in those churches. Yeah. And I look at people like Josh Duggar, and I know he's got probably got some mental issues, but if mm -hmm. you, like, I grew up going to this, it's hot down here in the South. We go to the swimming pool almost yeah. every day when we were kids, and we would have two pieces on with the boys playing, and it was no big deal because you got used to seeing skin of another human being. And it, right. and it, wasn't, um, it wasn't the girl's responsibility to control a man. The man's responsibility right. was to, and, and so when you see shoulders in the normal secular world, nobody is a, even affected by seeing somebody else. It doesn't yeah. do anything to anybody, you know? And yeah. so they've taken it. I was, Dave and I were talking about how they've taken what they believe to be the truth to such an extreme that it's become evil. And a lot of those yeah. fundamentalist circles I see as pure evil. Um, yeah. the way they treat people and it's not Christianity. It's not pure love. Yeah. It's not grace and mercy. It's not any of those things. And I do, I were, and they're innocent people that have gotten like mine, their mind has gotten scrambled by all this and they have good pure hearts. And I, yeah. I worry about them so much because when this yeah. flips and they realize everything they've been taught by their church is not what God taught, but right. what man has taught. Yeah. It's like what, what Michael says all the time, negative 48. He always says, think mirror. And like the more that I think about that, I'm like, he's so right. Like literally everything is flipped. Even in like, 
you know, it really just leaves there's rules and regulations and you do this and you don't do that because this is sin and this is not. It's like, but at the same time, that stripped us so far away from actually it's about your heart intention. Like that's like sin. Like if you, if you even think about someone, you've done it. Like, yeah. because it's your heart intention. Like, yeah. So you even thinking negatively towards someone else is just the same as a it's heart intention. Yeah. It's not it's not so like on the surface physical physicality of you did this and that's wrong and but if you do this that's not wrong. It's like no, it's like if someone has a heart intention that's not good, even if they're doing something good, it's still wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not so black and white. It's almost like there's a gray area in the sense Absolutely. of it's per, it's per person. Like, you know, if I show my shoulders or like cleavage or whatnot, because I want to get the attention from another guy and I want someone to look at me in a certain way, that's, I would say that's wrong. But if I want, you know, if I'm just, I like the outfit and I, you know, you're hot. Yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, I you live in Tennessee, like, Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, that's not exactly wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not, no, yeah, I have no intention of attracting or like putting myself out there in that way. I just want to cool off. Like, yeah, you know, it's like yeah. per person, it's per individual. It's not this collective. This is wrong. Right. I think that's where we've gotten so off track, and where it's the whole think mirror thing. It's like. It's not rules and regulations. It's per person. <laughs> that's I know. Why, yeah, that's why you can't piece. judge anyone like that. Like, no, and there are two-piece bathing suits I see women wear that are super conservative, that are not yeah. flashy at all, but that those churches yeah. would say, oh, you are, you know, being, you know, S-L-U-T-ish, you know, you're, you're just out there or whatever i'll probably have to bleep that word but uh, but uh, yeah no i agree it's always about intention and we've been reading um i don't know if you're familiar with michael and debbie pearl the pearls i think they're actually from tennessee too well they have their own ministry and they have this book called to train up a child and i've been reading it on david's channel i can't read it on youtube because it's so bad there's so much a b u s e in it child a b u s e you know um, I would suggest people watching, go to Amazon and read all the reviews. You'll see exactly what, but in the book, we got to section yesterday was where Michael was like telling, and I believe in my opinion that Michael Pearl is a, a, a psychopath or narcissist. Like the way that I, the videos I've seen of him, like he doesn't seem to be a person that has love or empathy and he's used mm -hmm. religion because narcissists or psychopaths will use anything they're familiar with as a weapon to, for their own glory. And so you see yeah. that a lot, I think, in a lot of these real fundamentalist CULTs with religion as the leaders are usually narcissistic. And it's not really yeah. about God. It's more about them. But in this book, he was giving parents advice about, like, how to be one with their child. He was like, you know, sit on the floor and play with them. Like, to, you know, enjoy being with them. And I was reading this book and I, I, I said to David, I was like, who's he talking to? Because most people I know who have kids right. don't need another pe person telling them to sit and play with their kids. Right. Like, that's just something they're going to do. Anyway. Yeah. And I said, you yeah. know, some, some people, all people, somebody said once, and I loved it. They were like, if you need religion to teach you right from wrong, then you don't need religion. You need morals. Most yeah. of us don't have to be told. You know, right. so carry empathy and compassion. And so therefore we, even if we don't know the person next to us, the stranger next to us, we still have a sense of empathy and compassion. And we're, we don't want to hurt that person. We don't want to take right. from that person. But yeah, you're right. right. Let's look at the theft. Let's look at stealing. One of the most right. popular books out there, one of the most famous plays out there is Les Miserables. And it's all based around uh, Jean Valjean, who was arrested for stealing bread for his sister's hungry child. Mm. Do yeah. you think God's going to judge somebody who steals because they're trying to feed someone? Right. The same as he would ju judge like someone in the government who does a, a bad deal to steal money yeah. from the public. It's right. totally different, two totally different scenarios. With yeah. different and you're right, it's all about the intention. It's yeah. all about the intention. You know, yeah. do you think and God's going to curse us because we cut? I cut my hair short as a woman? Right. No. <laughs> 
like those things are so trivial. It's like there are bigger fish to fry. Like, come on. <laughs> it's so stupid. I'm like, I don't oh. think God gives a crap about your hair. You do you, boo. Like, I think like, God's going to be like, whatever hairstyle makes you happy, that's why I gave you hair. Go and do it. You know, like. Right. I mean, I, I have seen something. This is kind of off topic in a way, but I have seen something super interesting about like hair being like such a connector frequency wise. Yeah. 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 And I was like, hmm, maybe that's why it said in the Bible at one point not to cut hair because it was like lowering your frequency. You know, who knows if that's yeah. still the case now, but like. Boy, so that's interesting. You, you bring that up. My boyfriend actually, my boyfriend, bless his heart, he's starting to lose a little bit of his hair up top, but you oh. know, he's still handsome. Um, but he, <laughs> he used to have this really long, thick, curly hair. And my hair looks thin, but it's actually, I've got, it's thin, but I've got a lot of it. It's pretty thick. But yeah. thin. And I have a really good, one of the things that I'm good at in this world, I have a really good sense of direction. Like I can get and my boyfriend doesn't, it's, it's actually kind of yeah. funny. Like I always know where to go, even if I just have a very good sense of direction. And he'll ask me, even when we go to his hometown in Florida, sometimes he gets a little mixed up and I'm the one that tells him where to go places. But um, <laughs> he said to me that they, there was, I, it might've been the New Zealand first. It might, the original um, people from New Zealand, they cut their hair after, when they had their long hair, they were able to navigate the oceans. They knew where they were going, but once they cut their hair off, they lost mm -hmm. where they were. And so it's like, yeah. an antenna, that hair is like, and yeah. so my boyfriend will laugh and say, that's why he doesn't know directions because he's starting to lose his hair. But <laughs> I don't, I'm not good at directions and I have tons of hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I can like, I can get places through landmarks, but if you tell me like roads and numbers, I'm like, I'm just gonna use a GPS on my phone. <laughs> I mean, I still use I, GPS too, but I mean, I think I, I like, I know where north. I can feel north and south um, and west and east. I kind of feel it in my body. I've always been able to yeah. do that. Um, oh. even when I was a little kid, I was able to do that. And I think that's just something you're born with. I think some people are just. Uh, my sister has very thick hair, and she's terrible at directions too. I'll tell you all a funny story. Sorry to my sister if you're watching. I know you're probably. Still <laughs> My sister went to Auburn uh, University in Alabama, which is is in a next to Georgia, and it's it's very close. It's not that far of a drive uh, from Atlanta, but you have to take I eighty five south to get to Auburn. Well, my sister one time when she was heading back to college after being home in Atlanta, she accidentally took I eighty five north instead of south, and she didn't figure oh. it out until she was like in the next state. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sucks. So, so yeah, no, it might not be the antenna thing. Cause she's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we always, funny. before we had GPSs on our phones, I remember my mother, when it was a GPS, you could just put your car, like an installation, yeah. my mother getting one for my sister, but not for me because she was more worried about my sister getting. So funny. So I think that's just something people are born with. It's just, some people are yeah. born to figure it out and others can. It's just is what it is, you know, but, um, yeah. but what, speaking of direction, what do you think? We're hearing from like Janine and some other people that there's actually land masses that we don't know about. Yeah. What do you yeah. think about that? Stuff from I, I definitely think it makes total sense. I, I, you know, I'm not sure <laughs> what that would look like, but I definitely believe it's true. Um, I, there was some video I watched where it kind of showed how like the act, like, you know they were just kind of speculating but it was very much like they showed kind of like what it would look like with the other continents and i think there's supposed to be 12 or something like that um yeah 12 or 13 i don't remember which would make sense um but i definitely think that's a that's a thing and maybe that's where like a lot of these other beings actually live <laughs> that we don't know about or who knows honestly who knows but i i it's a very cool theory to think about to me um, What's your gonna, thought on a? You think? Do you think we're on a round Earth or a flat Earth? Flat. Well, okay. So I think it's kind of like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, someone was laughing at me about that because I'm like, not really round, not really flat, but like a donut. I'm thinking like donut Earth, um, in the sense of like I think the ages, like what happens is I'm gonna be walking around. It's okay. Outside. Um, basically like where we like the center of it is a like kind of like a dimensional hole 
Um, and I think what happens is we kind of move inward and outward like this. And that's why there's so many different ages. And at one point there were giants and, you know, that kind of thing. Because I think it just kind of has gone into itself and it comes back around like through. Oh. There you are. I have been calling you again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it just goes into itself and comes back around with different ages. And that's kind of why, like, we like still are discovering things yeah you know like they're discovering dragons now and like all different types of things but i think they're just coming back up to the surface well do you want to hear something Uh, about giants that i learned on friday yeah military insider on david's channel giants are still here oh lovely they're still here (laughs) i mean they're just kept and when he said that my jaw i hit the floor i was like are you kidding Uh, yeah well maybe they're on that other continent. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that would make sense. Well, I did a deep dive into Agartha. Have you heard of Agartha? I've heard of it, but I don't exactly know what it is. So it would work in the, the model of Agartha would, a lot of people who believe in Agartha believe in like a hollow earth so that the earth is round, but it's mm-hmm. hollow inside. But it actually would also work on a flat earth model as well. Um, because it's literally just a kingdom that is under our feet. Yeah. And it's where, uh, get, check this, it's where there's, like, lizard people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, rep, like, the, I don't know if you can say that word. <laughs> I have no idea. It's getting more mainstream, so who knows? I know. Um, we're like, talking about, you know, game. we're talking about aquatic life, you two, <laughs> that we yeah. see in creeks and stuff, <laughs> the lizards you catch, you know, when you're a kid. As, like, we, as we usually do, right? Yeah. Um, Snakes, but, uh, all that kind of stuff, Yeah. Yeah, I think that it it could definitely be like a well, I think maybe that that would more explain also the whole donut earth is like the hole is like the dimension and then underneath the little the donut is like where all the like the crazy live. Yeah. <laughs> um, you well know, that's that kind of thing. There was a picture a while ago because Admiral Byrd, who lived um, mm-hmm. in the, in the 20, early 20th century, American uh, Admiral, he actually uh, allegedly went into Agartha and like met the beings that lived there. And, you know, the government, of course, shut him up. But when he died, his son released his diaries to the public. Yeah. And there was a picture that was floating around and I cannot find it anymore. But it was an, actually it was a picture of what we would consider to be the North Pole. But it was like mm. it went in. Wow. Almost like that donut you were saying, like it went in. Yeah. There, there was no that like so ground there. It went into like almost a cave, like huge, circular, like um, and so that would explain why they don't allow airplanes to fly over the North Pole. You know, if they don't yeah. you're going. It's like a vortex. Yeah. Like huh. That's I mean, cool to think y'all about. who are watching, I know everybody who watches this channel is just as awake as we are, but look at this, the psychedelic stuff that we're just chatting about right now and wondering about, and the normal people yeah. out there that are still watching like Fox and CNN and MSNBC, oh we're God, like yeah. understanding that this is all a possibility. We've got to that point where mm-hmm. we're okay with that. These people... Yeah. Think about, I mean, I, that's why I start to feel really bad for like normal people who aren't yeah. awake. Be, I know we like we what a shock. Yeah, I mean, we've had all these years to kind of slowly wake up. You know, first we realized yeah. certain things weren't as they seemed. Then we realized the whole thing with like the children. Then we real, and now we're starting to realize things with giants and like we're starting to understand that maybe our Earth isn't what we think it is. That maybe yeah. we don't have a straight answer about what we we're actually standing on. Um, yeah, and these people who we are really frustrated with right now. And I know that we're all getting frustrated with people that just won't wake up because we need them to wake mm-hmm. up. But you also have to have that love and compassion because Holy crap. Yeah. It's going to be like a bucket of cold water dumped on their head. You know, yeah, I mean, I know anytime that I hear something new that like totally, which is often that totally yeah. like goes against what I've be- believed uh, most of my life. I'm like, like the, I kind of get upset because I'm just like, I'm so tired of living a lie. I'm so sick of it. I just want to know what the truth is. So like, and these are like small things because yeah. I've been waking up over the past like eight years, really. I mean, some things that I've been awake to my whole life, but like really like consciously waking up, I've been 
you know, doing that for at least eight years now. But um, just just the fact that I still have the feeling of, oh my gosh, like, what else is a lie? Like, you know, it almost yeah. just makes me mad. Yeah. So imagine like the normies <laughs> just waking up to like even the smallest thing of what's going on in the world right now with our president and everything being a complete lie. Like, just yeah. imagine it's, it's, I mean, that's I get shocked every day. The, usually. That's the tip of the iceberg. And we know, yeah. Elizabeth, we know because we've been um, privy to a lot of conversations off camera with certain people mm -hmm. that there are a lot of people that we thought were gone that aren't yeah. gone and that they are really what we would consider to be really old right now, yeah. but they're, they're still here. <laughs> and the fact that right. our whole understanding of our lifespan might not be what we think it is. Right. You know, and okay. I know, you know, who we're talking yeah. about. We, 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 let's yeah. have <laughs> with people off camera where we've been like, what, you know? So, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, without saying it, the last thing I heard about, I was, my jaw was on the ground and I was like, yes, but what? Uh, oh, there you, did you freeze? <laughs> there were, yeah, no, absolutely. There was, that when, uh, we'll just say when senior, we know who junior is, but when we heard that senior was also still alive, like I was like doing the math and I was like, oh, yeah. and then I saw a picture and I was yeah. like, well, he looks young. Like he didn't, I mean, he looked older, like, like a grandpa, but not as old as you think he would be. Um, I think you froze up. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Oh, I might've lost her. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you now. Now it, it, it caught you. It, it froze you in a very beautiful st still though. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I just think about all the people that are still so asleep and I just, my heart. I'm, uh, I'm oh, can you hear me? Oh, you're cutting out. Can you hear me? Me. You're cutting out. Well, it's been about an hour. So can you hear me? And I wanted to, I'll just go ahead and say if you can hear me or not, I'll go ahead and tell our audience. Um, uh, we are going to be doing a giveaway for Elizabeth's t-shirts. I told you guys yeah. about that in our last episode. That should be happening in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I will post on the community board once we, Liz and I have a date planned um, to do that. To, I've got Liz, I've got so many people that have entered into this. Oh, I just totally lost her. We'll see if she uh, calls back in again. Um, but I was telling Liz, Liz and I were texting about how many of you guys have entered in to win one of Elizabeth's t-shirts. She's going to be giving a couple away. Um, Oliviera by Olivia on Etsy. I will put a link to her shop down in the description box below. And um, let me see if she's... All right, hold on. All right, sorry. I was just checking to see if she had texted me. Um, and Toronto, my new beautiful friend, Toronto, who was a part of the Jesus Strand with us, she is in her real life, she makes jewelry. And so she is sending me a couple of bracelets to also do for a giveaway. So once I figure out, we'll probably do Elizabeth's giveaway first with one of her t-shirts. And once I get the bracelets in and we figure out a schedule, I'll talk to Toronto. We can get her on the line. Oh, there she is. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, you don't have a microphone on. I don't see your microphone on girl. So if you can hear me. Hello. Oh, there you are. Can you hear me? They don't like us talking about a car. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> well, I was telling them when you signed off, awesome. if, you, if you can still hear me, I was telling uh, her how many mm -hmm. people, can you hear me? So if you can hear me, yes. I was telling them about, we were going to be doing the giveaway soon um, for your t-shirts, for your Etsy shop. Um, oh, you've, you've still, you've, you've paused again. Um, and so, uh, as I said, guys, um, I will post it on the community page on the community board when we have a date figured out to do the drawing for one of Liz's t-shirts. And again, I am going to put her shop down in the description box below her Etsy shop. I, my, um, it's all a pantomime Charlie Ward shirt. I wore it yesterday on David's channel. It's like my favorite shirt now. So, um, I can't wait 
for you guys to see. And she's got some, I saw you got some hoodies, girl. I was looking at some of your hoodies. I'm going to be ordering because yeah. it's going to be getting chilly soon. Well, chilly, my, my best friend up in Canada always makes fun yeah. of my call chilly. Um, so, um, yes. so she's got all, she's got kids line, kids clothes up too on her shop. And, um, yeah. And so we definitely want to support, uh, stop supporting these big corporations that are just doing dirty, dirty deeds. What's the ACDC dog? Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. And let's start supporting people like Liz and their businesses. And because uh, they're true, true human beings. I was, I was going to say true American people, but there are people all over the world that have their own shops that we need to be supporting uh, because they're the hu tr true humanitarians and true humans. And the meek shall inherit the earth. So, uh, but anyway, Liz, I'll go ahead and end the episode because you're having some issues with your uh, your reception there. So, um, thank you so much, Liz, for being here. And again, guys, on the community tab, when we figure out a date to give away in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. We'll place that on the day on the community tab for you guys to participate in. So awesome! All right, Liz, give Levi a big old big old kiss for me, and I'll. I'll text you when we get off. I, um, I talk to Liz every day. We text every day. So, <laughs> so, all right. Girl. <laughs> See yeah. you soon. Bye.